This meeting is being recorded, everybody. I will be sending it out to those in my email community um, and posting it on YouTube as a class for others to experience. So just so you know, if you're okay with that, please click okay. Um, fascinating facts being shared. This is awesome. Use the chat to communicate. I will say more about that later, but really quick, I'm Allegra. Thank you so much for coming. I have not led a free class since May. I am admittedly a little bit nervous. I'm always nervous before my classes. Um, so I'm really grateful that you're here and that you're all engaging. It just makes me feel like, yay, we're all just humans together in the same Zoom room. Um, and just before we get started, I did create some slides today. Some of you may know that I have in the past, I've used whiteboard papers and like flip charts to create my visual stuff. But yesterday I discovered the presentation options on Canva and it like made my creative, just like personality artistic side really happy. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, I can work with this. And so I had fun creating those for you. Um, I am um, an action taker. I have a bias towards taking action. I love working with people who have a bias towards taking action and because I believe that we learn through doing. But if we're not doing it from a place of self-awareness, then we can start to feel like hamsters on a, on a hamster wheel and like we're doing just to doing. So today's class is all about helping you deepen your self-awareness so that when you do start taking action, you're taking action that's the right fit for you. And that's really what the topic and today's theme is about, is what are the key ingredients of who you are, your coaching special sauce, so that you can bring that into your work, you can share it with other people, and you can start taking steps in your practice that hopefully feel like a really good fit for you. Um, so I'm mean, really excited to get started. We can go ahead and, as I said, for those of you who have hopped in the room, please keep yourself muted um, un unless I ask for people to hop in. Use the chat liberally and let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share my screen here. Now, if, we're, if for whatever reason something is going wrong, please just unmute. Did you know that on um, if you're muted, you can just hold the space bar down and it immediately unmutes you for a moment? And just tell me if you can't see me or something's off, that would be helpful. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let's see, oh, got another person here. I think, that's not it. It's not what I wanted you to see. Hold on, does this work? Hmm, interesting. see if you can see what I see. What do you guys see? Do you see like a presenter board or do you actually just see one screen? The key ingredients of your coaching special sauce by Allegra Sky. That's all you see, Nicole? You don't see all the stuff underneath it or the notes? Yep. Okay, great. It's working. <laughs> Yay, new tech. All right. So here's what today's plan is for those of you who like having a plan. Um, First, I'm going to just give you a few tips and tricks to getting the most out of yet another Zoom class. We are all in Zoom burnout. I try to make things interesting, so I'm just going to give you some tips. I'm going to share the first four ingredients of your coaching special sauce. We're going to pop into a little bit of breakout rooms, which depending on your strengths, either is like, yay, or ah, oh, but it'll be easy and fun. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit. I'm going to take one minute to just tell you what's in the souvenir shop of my museum, which uh, I'm just really excited about and want to let you know about. I'm going to tell you three more ingredients to just make things a little bit more interesting. And then we're going to open it up to Q&A and mentorship, coaching, whatever it is you need on the call. I'm going to aim to get through the bulk of this stuff in the hour, but I am happy to stay for 90 minutes. So if you're able to stay past the top of the hour, I hope you will to ask me any questions. All right, a couple things just to make this more fun. One, on Zoom is a little button in the bottom called feedback. And I invite you to share nonverbal feedback anytime. Everyone try that, please. Everyone go ahead and just check out the little feedback button at the bottom of your Zoom window and pick something. I think you should be able to choose if like you need things to slow down or if you like them. <gasps> Yekaterina shared a party button with me. Thank you, Yekaterina. 
All right, I see Lori giving me a thumbs up. All right, so there are fun options. I see Jill has given a hand. Oh, I see a horse popping up. All right, so th that's just a fun trick on Zoom is you can invite your audience to give nonverbal feedback. Use the chat liberally, which I've already mentioned. I love it when you guys communicate with one another. Also, when you look up at the view button, make sure that you have selected side by side presenter and you should be able to move the middle bar so that you see the slide and me. Is that working? There's a bar in the middle, right? And you can kind of minimize or maximize. So I hope you can see me and the slide together. So it feels personal. I'm not, I don't, you know, thank you for the thumbs up. All right, that's really helpful, awesome. And finally, one of the rules in my classes is it is not about what I say, it's about what you hear, okay? You are here hopefully to listen for a new insight. You're all watching the same movie. I say this all the time, but you're hearing different stuff. One of you is gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's, I never thought about it that way. Someone else might be like, oh, I kind of disagree with that. I am not here to tell you the right way to do things. I'm hopefully here to give you some new ways of thinking about your work and understanding the unique things that you bring into your coaching practice. Okay, so listen for what you hear. I'm gonna ask you to reflect that back later on in the call. So note it, note it when an insight comes from down here, doesn't come from up here. So just enjoy and notice what sticks. Okay, I am Allegra. If you haven't met me before, there are a lot of new faces on this call. I'm actually really excited to see you. This is really awesome. I have been coaching since 2012 and right now, I help other coaches lead with their own gifts, center their own unique ways of working, carve your own path, have more fun, break the rules. I'm really into trying to stop being distracted by what I call the coaching industrial complex and actually start taking valuable action in your work. Um, and this class here is part of what I call a free museum. And I invite you to take this idea with you. What's in your free museum? My free museum includes monthly classes like this. I have a podcast called The Niching Compass. I send out daily notes to coaches, which many of you perhaps see. Occasionally I'm posting on Instagram, I'm not super consistent. And over on YouTube is just a bunch of classes and ideas. So if you never buy anything from the souvenir shop, <laughs> I hope you really enjoy the free museum for as long as you want. I offer these classes with no expectation other than helping you have a new idea and insight and perhaps seeing things in your work in a new and creative way. So enjoy and have fun and enjoy looking around all the other places that there are to explore. One of the ideas that I teach that's really important is that there is no one right way, but there's a right way for you. Um, Krista is on this call and uh, well, it actually it was Krista was on the call, but it was actually another woman who's in a group with us. Her name's Laura and Laura told us about a podcast she heard from Brene Brown with Simon Sinek and Simon Sinek was talking about this idea of infinite games versus finite games. I guess he's got a book about this. Coaching is not a finite game. A finite game is like chess or tennis or ping pong where there's a set of rules and there's a way of doing things. And if you do them the right way, then you'll win. Infinite games don't have those kind of rules. Infinite games can be played in whatever way you want. Infinite games can be wildly creative. Creativity is one of my top values. So I talk about this all the time. You get to make it up. <laughs> if you don't like how you've been doing it, if you have resistance to how you've been told you're supposed to do it, that is not a problem because there's a right way for you, but you've got to know what those things are about you and how they inform your work. All right, so here's why it matters. Here's why it matters to understand your special sauce, what makes you unique and how you like to work. First, when you know your special sauce and how you like to work, you can be intentional. You can stand up for how you like to work. <laughs> you can say, 
I actually am not much of a relater, but I'm a deep thinker and I'd like to be a deep thinker in my coaching practice. Great. And you can invest in time, you can invest your time and energy in programs that are the right fit for who you are. Second, you can communicate it. Until we have words for things, they don't feel real. If I said to you, are you awesome? And you said, yeah, I'm awesome. Why are you awesome? Um, well, I just, it's just a feeling I've got. That's hard to, right? It's just becomes this amorphous thing that we can't communicate with people. So I'm really big at helping you find the language to describe who you are and how you like to work. And also when you accept and embody and marinate in your special sauce, you start to feel more confident you start to have more fun and things become more easy, which is a bit weird in today's society because we are told to work hard and to push and to make things happen in like a forced way. So things feeling easy can sometimes be like, wait, what? <laughs> but easy won't work. Thanks, Linda, for the cheer. I see that. Thank you for the reaction, Woo! right? I want, it's okay for things to feel easy and to feel fun because when they do, guess what? Then we wanna invite people to the parties we're throwing and tell people about what we're up to. And that doesn't mean that we don't do edgy things or we don't try and grow. It's that there's a way to do it that works for you and only you, all right? So if you don't know how you like to work, if you don't know the ingredients of your special sauce, it is very likely that you're trying to fit yourself into someone else's way. That you're following a teacher, which is great. Teachers are awesome. That you've heard a story that the coaching industrial complex has told you this is how you do it. It's a finite game. Do it this way. And you're like, okay, I guess I'm going to do it. It doesn't feel quite right for me, but this is the way. I want to celebrate what's right with you. And this is what Krista shared with me yesterday. So I'm like, I knew I, Krista inspired something on this call. And she's like, yeah, it's all about what's right with you and maximizing that. One of my top strengths is I'm a maximizer. I love like, you know, taking things and making them more awesome. And you're already all so incredible. And my hope is if you walk away from this call with one thing, it's that knowing that if how you've been told to do it doesn't feel right for you, that's not, it's not because of you. You are not broken. You're not doing things wrong. And you don't have to coach yourself or fit yourself into a mold. You, we can find a path that's the right way for you. And it's not gonna look the same. I am not here to tell you the right way. <laughs> if you're like, I'm gonna get on this call and maybe Allegra will tell me the right way to do this. Ah. But what I am gonna tell you is what you need to know about yourself to make sure that you have the greatest chance of doing that. Okay, let me check really quick and just make sure. Let me see if I can find. Ah, I can't find my little, I can't find my, uh, my Zoom controls to see if there are any chats or anything, that there are any questions. I think I'm in mystery mode. That's all right. I'll stop sharing here in a little bit and I'll go ahead and answer questions. So if you have them, please post them in the chat. All right. Are you ready? I'm going to give you the first four ingredients. Okay. Here are the first four ingredients. Ingredient number one. Actually, I'll tell you all four and then I'll go over them in detail. The first four ingredients that I want you to know about yourself is first one, what are your strengths? Your strengths are how you like to work. They're your natural talents. You do them automatically without even thinking. The second ingredient I'm gonna go over quickly are your values. Your values are what's most important to you and how you set your priorities. The third thing we're gonna talk about are your skills. Your skills are what you actually do all day. <laughs> Making these slides was a skill for me. <laughs> it's a burnout skill for me, but at least I know that. But skills are what you're actually doing with your time. And finally, what are you interested in? What are your personality-based interests? What are you motivated by? What are you inspired by? These are the core four ingredients to how you like to work and your special sauce. So let me go over them one at a time. The first thing is your strengths. 
Your strengths are your innate talents. They come easily to you. They come so easily to you that you don't even know that they're strengths. <laughs> you don't even know what your superpowers are, but you've got them because you just are like, doesn't everyone do this? And we perform better when we do things that come naturally to us. When we align to our strengths, when we say, okay, can I let this lead the way? Everything becomes more easy and fun. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you, um, I use a particular tool for gathering strengths. It's through Gallup, it's the Strengths Finder Test. It's widely accessible. That lists 34 strengths. And you take this assessment, you get your order. I really, when I start working with coaches, I really like to look at the top five. And those 34 strengths are organized into four categories. Now I'm gonna describe these categories. And while I'm describing them, I want you to think about which one do you think is towards the top for you? There's relating strengths and influencing strengths. Relating strengths are strengths that really inform having deep relationships with individuals. People with a lot of relating strengths at the top are relationship builders. They typically have like to just strengthen their one-on-one -on -one partnerships with people. My top driving strength is actually relater. <laughs> That's why I'm always asking you, hey, send me an email back because I legitimately read everyone and wanna know who you are. I love knowing people on an individual basis. Influencing strengths are your ability to influence a group, your ability to persuade, your ability to motivate others, to influence change through helping other people take action on things. I once worked with a coach who her top five strengths were all influencing strengths. And you could tell, she was like, I don't wanna have six month partnerships with anybody. <laughs> She's like, I just want to have 15 minute sessions with people who are stuck and I want to give them a kick in the pants and send them on their way. I was like, yeah, because you're clearly an influencer. You have these influencing strengths. The third, the other two, those are outward facing. Inward facing strengths are executing and thinking strengths. If you have executing strengths towards the top, you're likely able to get things done very easily. It comes naturally to you to make things happen. You get things done, you follow through. A little bit of a note, my first executing strength shows up at number 13. <laughs> a lot of coaches I work with find that executing strengths are a little bit lower on the list. It doesn't mean that they're not there. They just don't surface as naturally or as quickly. And finally, the fourth category are thinking strengths. People with thinking strengths have a really um, dynamic and multi-layered internal world going on. They're able to absorb information. Are you a learner? Do you love learning about stuff? Yeah, you're a thinker. Do you gather information and just store it? That's a thinking strength. I love working with coaches who have lots of thinking strengths up top because there's a big story to crack like, well, how can I be a thinker and also be a really powerful partner with someone? And that's just a beautiful place to play. We call them super thinkers, right? So what I'd love for you to do now, little interactive moment, shake it off, stop listening to me, go in the chat. If you had to guess, and some of you I know know, what category of strengths do you think, just based on my very high level explanation, what category of strengths do you think is like likely towards the top for you? Are you more of a relater? You love the one-on-one? -on -one? An influencer, you like motivating and inspiring through a group? There's the chat, I found it. So Krista's got thinking, Julie has relating, Tatiana relating and thinking, Vicky a thinker, this is great. Jill, it's not a problem not to wanna to do one-on-one. -on -one. Not that you said it was, but. I like whenever everyone was like, I think I want to try this. I'm like, yes, try. We got relating strengths, thinking strengths. Nicole has three executing. Kara asked, where's the quiz? It's actually uh, through Gallup Strengths Finder. I'm happy to share more too. You can get it on your own. The, yeah, it's just the straight up Gallup Strengths Finder strengths test. Yes, there will be a recording available, Sabina. Awesome. Hey, this is awesome. I love seeing this chat. Sorry, I didn't see him earlier. Super thinker here. Hoda's a super thinker. All right. 
So I will let you know that my top strength is relator. I have some influencing strengths. I'm an activator. I'm also an ideator. When I found out that I was an ideator, I was like, that explains it. Cause I'm always coming up with new ideas. I love helping all of you come up with ideas. Um, I'm a maximizer. So I'm always looking for ways to kind of improve things and make things happen and kind of like, cool, what can we do next? And I also have adaptability as number five. Adaptability is like the very easy going. It shows up like I'm easy to flex and move. My clients will say like, oh, I'm so sorry. I have to cancel last minute. And I'm like, that's okay. Like, you know, very go with the flow. So knowing what your top strengths are is a key part of your coaching special sauce. Um, Jill, yep, a lot of thinking, a super thinker here. So I want you to celebrate that. Knowing your strengths is key, okay? All right, the second ingredient are your values. Values dictate what's most important to you. Okay, they dictate what is most important to you. If you don't know what your values are, you can't center them. Now, here's the thing. Values exercises are ubiquitous in the coaching industry. <laughs> this is not new. You're like, yeah, it's a values exercise. But you've got to, there, there has to be a willingness not to just know them, but to kind of say, all right, so how does this impact my work? Because if there's a values misalignment with a client, things will feel off. If there's a values misalignment with a program you've designed, things will feel off. If there's a values misalignment with a program you've signed up for, things will feel off. You might be using all your strengths, but if the values alignment isn't there, it's going to feel sticky. Knowing our values informs client and program fit in very valuable ways. One of the coaches in, in Misfit to Maverick, she has taken her values and made a little card with questions. Is this fun? Do I have a chance to be curious? Am I using my sense of humor? And if she can't answer those questions, she knows that something's not quite right. So make sure you have not only asked yourself what your values are, but also, sorry, I'm just trying to move you guys here. But how knowing those values is going to inform um, how you create your practice. If you guys could just make sure you're muted. I think someone new hopped on. Just hop, click your mute button. All right, third ingredient, skills. So you're using all your strengths. This sounds, feels great. You're aligning to your values. This is great. What are you actually doing with your time? <laughs> I'm like, girl, you need to change the, the slide. You can't see it? It didn't, it didn't change from values yet, no. Really? You don't see the skills one? How about now? Hmm. All right, let me, let me stop sharing for a second, see if I can fix that. Ready to see me big? Hey, everybody. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can share it again and make this right so you can see the skills one. Stand by, stand by for tech repair. I feel like you're all on a roller coaster and the roller coaster just stopped for a second. Okay, hold on. Let's see if this works. Thanks for your patience. You're all great. How's that? You see the skills? Thanks. See the thumbs up? Awesome. So there are different kinds of skills. If you don't know how you like to work, you're going to spend your time doing stuff that totally burns you out. So understanding what your energizing skills are versus your burnout skills is just really cool because it helps explain and understand why some days feel so crummy and some days feel like you're on the top of the world. As coaches, particularly early in your journey, I don't know where you're all at on your coaching adventure, but early on in particular, it feels like we have to do it all. And I just want you to know that choosing to do it all doesn't mean that you like doing it all. <laughs> you don't have to like doing it all. And when you understand the nuance of your skills, are you, you know, do you enjoy administrative tasks? Do you enjoy computer skills? Do you enjoy graphics? Do you enjoy more um, 
uh, creative and artistic projects? Do you like interfacing with people? Do you like customer service? There's so many different skills that there are to either be energized by or burned out by that knowing what skills, again, light you up or burn you out might not change if you choose to do them or not, but at least you know going in how how it's going to feel and why you have resistance for it. I think oftentimes when we don't enjoy doing something, we are told that we need to coach ourselves out of that. Oh, you don't like doing it? That's that's on you. Coach yourself to like it. And it's like, no, we aren't, we don't need to like or be good at, actually being good at, I need to qualify that, all of the things. And one last thing about skills, you can be good at a skill that you don't find energizing. You can be good at something, but not find it energizing. But understanding your skills is important as you go through and really try and figure out which pieces am I gonna like. This is particularly relevant if you're signing up for business programs and they're like, all right, we're gonna teach you how to blank. And if the thing they're gonna teach you actually is a burnout skill for you, that might not be the best place to invest, right? It's like find things that allow you to use the things that come most naturally to you. And finally, the fourth ingredient, and then we're gonna to get together and chat a little bit to see what you've heard in all of this, are your interests. Your interests involve how you're wired. It's, it's, it's based on your personality. It's what you're motivated and inspired by. You have interests. There are things you just like, the way that you see the world, your natural interests, your passions. The problem sometimes with advice that says like, follow your passion is that it's only one part of who you are. All of these ingredients work together. Strengths, values, skills, interests. Like, they, it's balanced. Oh, surely, I'm so sorry. I don't know why it's not working. How's that? Back to interests? Bingo. Thank you, Shirley. Your interests are your fourth one. And there are kind of different categories of interests. You can be artistic, you can be more conventional. You can have more of a social personality type, an enterprising personality type. Perhaps you're more realistic or investigative and curious. These different personality types work together to inform what you are motivated by, inspired by. And this too presents a very important part of what your special sauce is. All of these ingredients don't just exist as individual things. They blend together in really cool ways. Let me give you an example of this one. Actually, it just showed up. To, I had this insight yesterday. Building slides is a burnout skill for me. Building slides is a burnout skill for me. And when I sat down yesterday, I was like, all right, I'm going to make some slides. I have some ideas that I, I want to be able to get share in a better way. I guess I'll start. I've been using Google Slides. And then I'm like, I think Canva has presentations. I'll check those out. And I got into Canva and it was like, they had this template and I was, my creative, I have artistic and social as a personality type was suddenly really lit up. And I found that the burnout skill of making slides was kind of balanced out by the artistic part of my personality being very happy at finding this kind of presentation. All right, so all of these things work together um, to kind of combine and create what makes you unique, what makes you interesting, and what your work preferences are. Let me see if there are any questions that have been posted, and then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, pop you in a breakout room. Again, if you're like a relating influencing strengths, you're like, ooh, new people, breakout room. If you're more of a thinker kind of executor, you might be like, ah, oh, breakout rooms, it's going to be super easy. <laughs> And everyone here is super awesome. So it'll just be a nice connection moment where you don't have to listen to me, but you can actually turn towards one another. So let me take a look and see if there's any questions that have come up. Um, unflappable, like, thank you, Lori. Like Instagram, uh, let's see. Sometimes people support us in those skills we are really good at, but done with or have no real interest for us. When there's subterfuge about what we'll actually learn in the business coaching program, um, 
Lots of these things develop change with experimentation. Interest passions aren't static. 100%, Rachel. I'm a big fan of experimenting. Jill said, if you weren't creative and hated Canda, would you go back to whiteboard flip chart for slides? Maybe for this class, there were some ideas that I definitely wanted to capture. Um, but yeah, I love using my flip charts and I love using my whiteboard. Um, so I likely would have been like, I'm just gonna draw it out. But I wanted to get some things in kind of a, a collected way because I knew I had some more, more to share than maybe I could have captured on the whiteboard. All right, we are going to do a little breakout moment. Let me know if you can see this slide. Can you see this slide called a breakout moment? Jean can. Ooh, some of you can, some of you can't. No, no. Wow. Jean, you have the special thing happening over there. She's got that <laughs> special sauce. She does have the special sauce. Try one last time. I'll try and fix this while you guys are in your breakout rooms. Can you see that now? There it is. All right, everybody. I'm going to pop you in some breakout rooms, and here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to go around. Each person just take a minute or so. And I want you to share what is one part of being a coach that has come very, very naturally to you. Okay? So, all right, I've been trying to be a coach. I've been in this world. What is something that you found that has come naturally to you? You can, if you would like, kind of postulate like, oh, I think this might be a skill or it's a value or a strength. Don't worry too much about figuring out what in category it is. And I'd also like you to share what is something that has not come naturally to you or which feels forced. If there was one thing you could stop doing today that you've been told you should be doing by the coaching industrial complex, what would you rebel against? Okay, so it's kind of your chance to say, you know what, this part has come really easily. This part, if I could just stop doing it. Now, some of you I know already have your UMAPs, you know these things about yourselves. This is just hold space for everyone. Don't worry about trying to clarify whether it's a strength or a value or a skill. We don't need to get that deep into it. Really just holding space for one another to share your experience currently of being a coach in this industry, what's feeling right, what's not feeling right, and just notice what emerges in that conversation. Are there any questions about that? And just enjoy connecting with a couple of new people. Share your name. It's 1235. Let's see, I'm gonna make some breakout rooms here. How many I can get in here? I'll do six. We're going to do six breakout rooms. It looks like there are about three. There are four in one of the groups, but there are three in others, which is nice. You can kind of like take your time. Um, so let's see what we can do in six minutes. Sound good? All right, everybody. Enjoy connecting. See you in a minute. Uh, marketing and shining our light is oftentimes very edgy. I call it shining our light. I totally get that. We don't love self-promotion. I'm not the only bull in the China cabinet. Surely. Love it. We struggle with imposed structure. All three of us had similar issues. Struggling with being rather than doing. I'm grateful Krista and Lori were in my breakout. That's awesome, Jill. We're not alone in the things we struggle with. Not liking Instagram. Okay with niching. Not okay with niching. We seem to be aligned in not marketing our services, love our craft and not want to coach. Marketing from having to energy is draining. This is great. This is awesome. Yeah, it's super interesting. I find just that that tends to be a, um, the interplay between coaching and figuring out how to market our coaching, I have a strong point of view about. Um, it's I talk about it in lots of different places. If you've been around long enough, you've likely maybe absorbed some of my point of view. But the, the craft of our coaching is a practice. And the shining our light is another practice. And inviting people is a practice. 
There are so many things to practice. I could do a whole other class on that. Maybe I will in September. Like we think that just we become a coach and then it's like a switch goes off and we're just doing it as if it's unlike any other craft out there. But if you told me today you wanted to start winning tennis matches, but you'd never played tennis, I would say, then we better start practicing. And we first better practice our forehand and then our back, and like so many things to practice, which combine together to create winning the, the match. And so for those of you who find tension in these parts of being a coach and shining your light, I know, I get it, I'm in it too. And it's just another place to practice and get creative, which is what I love. I'm always like, well, let's find a new way or the creative ways. How could we frame it? How could we simplify it? But this is awesome. Um, all right. What I want to do is I'm going to give you the three, the three uh, uh, final little ingredients, which just make things more saucy and amazing and interesting. I do want to take a minute really quick to share what is in the souvenir shop of my free museum in case you are interested in getting support on this. It's gonna take about 60 seconds because this is not the point of this call. But as I tell the coaches that I work with, do not be afraid to tell people what's in your souvenir shop. <laughs> Have a free museum where people can experience who you are and be served and enjoy the day. And say, hey, there's a souvenir shop. So I'm gonna walk my talk. I'm gonna show you what's in my souvenir shop really quick and then we're gonna continue with the other three parts, three key ingredients of your coaching special sauce. I've changed hopefully the slide presentation, hopefully it works all right. The souvenir of my coaching ecosystem right now is a course, a cohort based course that I run. It's kind of been renamed recently. It's called UMAP for Coaches. I am a certified UMAP coach. Your UMAP is the tool, it's an assessment that actually tells you these four things. It shows you your strengths, values, skills, and interests. So if you're like, I wanna know these things about myself so I can start using them, I highly encourage, I believe every coach should have their UMAP. I am here today because in December of 2019, I thought every coach should have their UMAP because of what it was like for me to have mine. All right, so I developed a program around it. It was formerly called the Niching Compass. Some of you were in the Niching Compass with me. Um, but I've really taken it and distilled it and refined it. I've been running it now for two years and there is a new cohort coming up. It's coming up the first week of September um, because I believe that I don't want you moving any further in your work without understanding, embodying and centering these things about yourself. Because if you're not leading with these things, it's not gonna feel right. And I'm here to help you find a path that feels right for you. All right. It's a small group. It's very high touch. I am teaching it in person. Um, the next round starts September 6th and the door spots are going to open at the end of this month on August 30th. So if you want to see details, umapforcoaches.com is where that info is. And I would love it if any of you are like, if you don't want to take action without knowing these things about yourself, I encourage you to check it out. I would love to, uh, I'd love to talk to you about it more. So that's my souvenir shop. But let's move on back to the display that we're exploring today and the last three ingredients. The three ingredients that make things even more interesting that I, I can't encourage you enough to take into consideration as you play with your coaching practice is one, your lifestyle. You are, as Alex Baisley, who's a colleague, friend, mentor, he has, he's taught classes in Misfit to Maverick. As he has said and reminded me, we are not building a business, we are building a life. And so what does your life look like? <laughs> what do you need to take into account to feel really good and energized by your work? Are you a night owl? Maybe you want to coach at midnight. How cool would that be? I'm waiting for a coach to call themselves the midnight coach. And at midnight every night, they get on Zoom and whoever wants to hop in can pay 20 bucks for a 15 minute laser session, midnight coaching. How fun and what creative is that? that fits with your lifestyle and it breaks all the rules because it's an infinite game we're playing here. What are your quirks? What makes you interesting? What makes you you? Are you letting those things shine? Are you letting people in on how you just show up in the world? Sometimes I'll sing things. It's so nice to see you. Or I'll point my finger like this. 
or I'll wear a hoodie. I love wearing my hoodie. I don't have on that one now because it's a little bit warm today. Those are just my quirks. And when I gave myself permission to start letting them be a part of my work, my work became more interesting. And people started saying, oh, look, that's a human person. <laughs> she's a human being with stuff going on and she's her, her slides don't work all the time. And right, so let your quirks be a part of your special sauce. And also another big kahuna, which we could spend a whole workshop month on is your point of view. It is not a problem to coach around things that you have an opinion about. You can have an opinion about stuff. What I am doing in this class is I'm sharing with you my perspective, the way that I see it. It is not the right way. I am not giving you a proven system. I don't pretend to have the answer for everyone. I'm sharing a perspective based on my experience and the way I see the world with hopes that it helps you. And so that you have a better understanding that should you choose to work with me in some, at some point in the future, you know how I steer my ship. And you've got that. You disagree with something out there. You see advice being given about your field and you're like, oh, I hate, oh, that is the worst advice. What is your advice? What would you do? Let these things be a part of how you show up in the world. They make what you do all that more interesting. And all of these things work together to become a beautiful sauce. And guess what? Making sauces is one of the most difficult things in the culinary world. I say that as someone who's watched a lot of Top Chef. <laughs> but from what I've gathered, saucing work is like really an art form. And so seeing this today, it's all here right now. They're like, oh, it's cool. Okay, yep, this is neat. But I want you to let it soak in and ask yourself, what would it be like if you let these things play a leading role in how you show up in your craft? Because there's lots of levels of impact here. Considering these ideas is gonna impact who you are. It's gonna help you build confidence and language and express yourself. It's gonna impact your coaching, finding clients who are a fit for you and who you are a fit for, your coaching style, all of the creative options, pick ones that are a good fit for how you like to work and your coaching practice. Create coaching experiences that are a reflection of how you show up in your special sauce. How do you wanna shine your light? When you're taught, all of you are like, oh, marketing. It's because of what the idea of marketing needs to be. What if you sh look, could show up in the way that you want? in a way that excited you, that it was aligned with your strengths and your skills and your values and interests, your visual expression. So what you're going to do, right? The steps you're going to take are gonna be different for each and every one of you because you're all so uniquely magical in a combination of all of these variable things, variable things, various things. So we're gonna play now and we're gonna make something called a- No, uh, 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 about it. Oh, Cammie, I'm gonna ask you to mute. There we go. We're gonna make something called a collage. A collage uses a tool called Jamboard. If you haven't used Jamboard, I invite you to steal that idea from me today and start using it yourself with your Zoom calls because it makes them a little more fun and colorful. I am a, this is a collage from another one of my classes. I'm always trying to pull them out. And essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna use post-its, images, or text, and we're gonna capture your insight so far. What do you wanna remember from today? What did you hear? If you were to go tell a friend, I just went to this class with this kind of kooky girl, but I remembered this thing. She said this thing and it just made me go, oh, that's what I want you to capture in the collage. So it's gonna look like this. So I'm gonna stop my share. I'm going to post the link in the chat and I invite you to open it up and we're going to make a gorgeous collage together. Let's see what we can create. I will send this out in an email so you'll get a nice snapshot and if you need more than page one, please feel free to shift over to page two. Someone's going to rebel against page one. I can feel it. They're going to be like, there's too much happening. 
I'm going to take a look at the questions. It's different. This is different from Misfit to Maverick. Rachel, I'll go ahead and answer. Um, I'm happy to answer your question, Rachel. Let me just make sure everyone, if you have a question about the collage, please go ahead and just unmute yourself and ask. Let's see who's going to share the first insight or takeaway. Freedom! All right. That's an awesome first insight and takeaway. Whoever posted that, I love it. Who I am will help me determine who I want to coach and how I want to coach. That's exactly right. People who want to coach with me want an activator on their team and an ideator and someone who's also kind of adaptable, adaptable and free, you know, and aligns with my values in certain ways. And, and I've, I've just learned that it's okay for those things to be a part of what I do and how I show up. And I want that for you. If you are a super thinker, I want you to be able to say, I am a super thinker. And that makes me an amazing thought partner for someone. And I don't have to do it like the others are doing it because I'm going to do it like I want to do it. Look at these amazing insights popping up. You can have an opinion about what you are coaching on. Oh man, that, that was an awesome insight. <gasps> People have moved to page two. Someone was like, I am jumping to page two. Keep adding those insights, everybody. Keep playing with that collage. I'm going to answer Rachel's question while you are playing because I want to just be aware of the time. I am staying, by the way. I can stay another until 1.30 Eastern, but um, I want to make sure that I get any questions that some of you posted. So Rachel said, um, is this different from Misfit to Maverick? So yes, Rachel, Misfit to Maverick is the community space, but a kind of to be to join Misfit to Maverick, you have to have your UMAP. Everybody in Misfit to Maverick is talking and creating from their UMAPs. So UMAP for coaches is the entry point into Misfit to Maverick. It actually includes two months, your first two months membership. Um, so they're they're very much integrated. And UMAP for coaches is the first step. And when you join UMAP for coaches, you become a part of the Misfit to Maverick community right away. Uh, my point of view is an ingredient. I have to let that sink in because of fear of not wanting to get in the way of the client. Sophia, or Sophia, forgive me if I'm not getting the right um, accent point, but I get that. And you can be a powerful coach and be and hold neutrality and have your client be in choice and be judgment free and not know better than your client knows and trust that your client is whole and complete. And you can have your own experience and thoughts about and perspective on the journey that they're on. They can be separate. You can wear that very neutral, pure coaching hat. And sometimes, Sophia, maybe you're going to be a teacher or a guide or an advisor or a mentor. I led a class actually called The Many Hats of Being a Coach. I, it might be public on YouTube. I'll take a look for it. I know it's in Misfit to Maverick, but um, um, I've talked about that, about what it, who we actually show up as in our coaching. Let me look at the collage. <gasps> you guys, this collage is awesome. You need to use collages in your classes. We will never make anything like this again. It's like this snapshot of today and it makes me so happy. So thank you for contributing, continue to play. And I'm gonna share just one last kind of thought before we go. I'm gonna share my screen one last time and then I'm gonna open it up to your questions and answers and whatever I can help you with over the next 32 minutes, I am here and happy to do that. So here's my last little slide. Who you are is at the center of your work. And knowing who you are and these parts of your secret sauce will drive and inform every, not very, I knew there was gonna be a typo, human every other part of your coaching adventure. So please take action from a place of self-awareness and acceptance and notice what starts to emerge. When you let these parts of who you are be 
at the center of the work that you're doing, when you build a cat coaching practice that's aligned to your work preferences, magical things start to happen. So please be more you. <laughs> be the beautiful, special, unique, special sauce that you are. And when someone says, I see this a lot actually on Instagram, like be more you, I'm like what does that mean? What it means are these ingredients. Let your strengths lead, align to your values. Know what skills are energizing and burn you out. What is your personality type and how, what are you motivated and inspired by? What are your quirks? What is your point of view? What is your lifestyle? All of these things are what make up who you are. And um, I wish I'd been told this at the beginning. That's why I'm here. To let you know that you can let it shine in this way and it'll lead you down a path that just feels a lot more just relaxed and fun. I just want us all to be having more fun. <laughs> so I would love now to open up if anyone wants to, um, you can keep sharing your thoughts on the collage. Raise your hand. If anyone wants to just, you know, it depends on the size of the group, but if anyone would like to come on, what have you heard? What questions are lingering? Obviously, I'm happy to answer questions about UMAP for coaches, but I can do that another time. I might do a Q&A later in the month. Um, what do we got? What would you love to just explore and maybe dive in? Who can I help? I'm here to help. I'd love to get to know all of you a little bit. Love seeing coaching as an adventure. It most definitely is lifestyle versus a business. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't get to see you before you had to go. Have to run too. Um, this was wonderful. Thank you, Jean. Kara, I think we've been taught not to let our point of view come out. That's why it feels like we're doing something wrong. Kara, are you game for coming off mute? Oh, cool. Let me, you know, let me go ahead and I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, Rachel had her hand up and then if Kara's here, I'd love to pop you up. Rachel, go ahead. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. It's great to meet you. I've really enjoyed following your emails and podcasts. I appreciate you doing that. I hope they're helpful. Yeah, super helpful. Um, one thing that I'm realizing over the course of paying attention to your work and also with this is that it's a longer process to develop what your coaching practice looks like. And I think I've been turned off by a lot of the business trainings up until this point, because they tend to be those like six month formulaic or six week, whatever, scale to seven figures, like you know, fit within this very specific container. And yeah. then at the end of this, you'll just have this like thriving coaching practice or whatever, rather than trying to see what emerges over the course of experimentation and I was wondering how do you um, balance the like I don't know some maybe some of the frustration that might come from the fact that this is maybe a longer process than some of us thought it might be getting into our coach training programs um, that's an awesome question you are speaking my like the what you said about emergence as a result of experimentation surely I see you smiling maybe because you're like yep yeah, that's <laughs> Shirley, Shirley actually is a really great reference for this and maybe she'll share in the chat, but she, she, her and I have known each other since we kind of both started on this journey and can speak to really, and if, if any other coaches on the call have been at this for longer than a year, two years, I mean, I'm now in my 10th year of, of since my certification, it is a long game because it is an art form. <laughs> There's something about when we become coaches, we become heavily, heavily marketed to that it is a get rich quick industry. And so part of our frustration is that the reality doesn't match up with what we've been told because everything is like six months, 10 to do this, make it quick, how much per month? It's all this like measured urgency. And if it's not happening, what we start to tell ourselves it's because we've done something wrong. The, the alternative, which is what I'm just trying to share, but from a place of excitement and good news is like, hey, guess what? It's okay if it takes more time because that's what art does. Practicing a craft, mastering something. And here's the thing, if you on this call are trying to build your own coaching practice, from the beginning, I was not looking to get hired. I was like, no, I wanna do my own thing. You're not only trying to master one art form, you're trying to master two. 
<laughs> you're not only trying to become a really amazing coach, which in and of itself takes time. You're also trying to practice all the things that come with building your own space and marketing your work and shining your light and having discovery mm -hmm. calls and all this stuff. That happens at different paces for different people. I'm not here to say, no, it's gonna take a long time versus a short time. It, it, it's different, we're all different. And as far as like balancing it and to answer your question, like how do you handle like that kind of like you want it to happen faster. A couple of things that I like to say, one, embrace a spirit of practice embrace a spirit of experimentation and be willing to experiment as much as you can. When you experiment, there is no failure. Experimenting gets you into action and action is where you learn. Do you have an idea you wanna share with someone? You can set up a date, time and place next week and do exactly what I've just done. You can reach out to the email I sent out this morning. You can invite three people you know right now and get in the work and try it and see how it feels. So I think part of it too, Rachel, is not just how long it's gonna take, but what we're doing with our time. That's another thing that I kind of rebel against is like, oh, you've probably all gathered, depending on how long you've been following my work. I'm a big fan of talking to people like being in conversation. I'm alpha testing a new course this week, starting this week called the Conversation Project to help coaches literally just start talking to people. Thank you, Linda, love you. Um, because everything else that we're all focused on and we're being marketed to is like padding. It's like, oh, you wanna talk to people? First do this. Oh, you wanna go talk to people? First set up blank. You could all fill in the blank. You all have something that just popped in your head. Oh, I got to build a website. I got to pick a niche. I got to fill out a program. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to be perfect. Then I can talk to people. I'm like, let's just start talking to people. Because that's where co coaching is a relationship thing. And you don't have to have a lot of relating strengths. You can still be a deep, profound thought partner for someone if, you're, if you lead with thinking strength. So Rachel, what have you heard in this? I feel like I've kind of riffed a lot, but has anything stuck with you? Is anything kind of surfaced that you want to hold on to? Well, when you said, you know, we think that we have to have X before we can have conversations, immediately website popped into my head, which was like, website is this um, symbol of credibility, I think, for a lot of people that we're not a legitimate coach or entrepreneur if we don't have some sort of dedicated professional web um, presence, right? That we're just this like yep. slim flam, um, woo woo, whatever. Uh, coach or whatever. And then the other thing is, so if this is going to be, this is it, we're playing the long game, right? This is, you know, wicked versus kind learning environments. And then what are we doing with our time in that space? Like, am I going to focus my efforts on creating Instagram posts or am I going to focus my efforts on, you know, maybe going to a volunteer experience where I can have conversations and hear people at a free clinic and see what they are concerned about and healthcare, or I'm going to go to more networking events and see what's on people's minds and use my energy toward that stuff, because that's A, what excites me, and B, that's the sort of thing that's going to give us more information about what we want our coaching practice to be in the long run. Talk to people. <laughs> it's about talking to people and listening to them and practicing. One of the things, uh, depending on how long you've been getting my notes to coaches, I, I talk about conversations a lot, but there are kinds of conversations. And one of the kinds of conversations, I call an explanation conversation, where you reach out to someone you know right now and say, can, I, can you do me a favor and give me 15 minutes and I'm gonna explain my work to you and I need you to re reflect every question you've got. You do that every day for two weeks every day for two weeks, your friends, your family, your partner, your colleagues, can I just practice talking about what I do and explaining it? I guarantee at the end of those two weeks, something amazing will have emerged. <laughs> Far more valuable than sitting in our offices, in our imaginations, trying to figure out what to put on our website, just because we were willing to talk to people. Bree, I'm sorry that I, I'm, if you catch the recording, Conversations are where it's at. Um, Kara, Kara Berkeley, or Kara, forgive me if I'm, are you game for hopping, for unmuting? 
Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You've been sharing about point of view. What, um, what surfaced for you when I mentioned point of view? Well, I, like I put in the chat, I think when, um, I don't know how many of you are life coach school coaches, but we are taught and really like ingrained, um, in us that we do not give opinions. We do not share, um, what we call a line coaching, right? Like, uh, I think you said your advice or your, you know, kind of like perspective. And so for me, I was like, oh, well, maybe I could. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have an opinion about her? Oh, uh, lots of things. What really just, I'm sure. what just get, if you were walking by a coffee shop and you saw, but heard a bunch of people talking and you heard someone and they said something and you just went, Oh, I've got an opinion about that. What would that thing be? Oh what man. Just, I am not quick on my feet. Um, no, that's okay. I don't want to make it all uncomfortable. It's all right. If you want to think on it, I can't if, think of something right off the top of my head, but that, that's okay. If it comes to you, you might be a super thinker, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> that's good, but that's mm-hmm. great. Being you know, like, actually, I need a little more time to think about that is awesome. Mm-hmm. I think this is a fascinating thing that you bring up Kara. And many of you have noted the point of view. Mm-hmm. I can have a strong point of view. I have a strong point of view about the coaching industry. I have my own experience as a coach. I have the things I've learned from working with many, many, many coaches over the last two years and what I learn and what I hear. I've got a perspective and opinions. My advice comes from my values. Little fun thing about values. People's advice comes from their values. But I've also come to redefine what coaching is for me. And it includes many different hats. You'll also know I am not coaching on this call. I'm sharing my point of view and I'm mentoring a little bit. You know, if any of you are like, what should I, like, I'll offer some mentoring. Like, well, you could try this or you could try that. I'm letting my ideator shine. I'm not wearing my coaching hat right now. Because when I'm wearing my coaching hat, one thing, well, actually I wear this no matter what hat I'm wearing. I never pretend to know what's better, what's best for any one of you. I never pretend or have believe that I have the right answer and you don't. I always am aiming to keep people in choice and holding a neutral space, right? Those are some of the foundations of deep coaching. And that stuff is with me all the time. But if I'm with a client and they're looking for some ideas, I will put on my brainstorming hat. Say, you know what? I'm going to be a brainstormer with you. And we're going to hear some, you don't have to pick them up, but here's some ideas. If that coach is about to go on a journey that I have been on 10 times, (laughs) I will say, is it all right if I tell you about what I experienced here? And I'll put on my guide hat or my mentoring hat. So having a point, having an opinion about the journey that you coach on does not mean that you are not adhering to the prime tenets of being a coach for someone. I hope that's making sense. It's such a fascinating thing. And this idea of like, we can coach around things we have an opinion about. I find when it's put on the table and we talk about point of view, things really start to shake up because here's the thing, when you coach around things you have an opinion about, you're going to light up. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're yeah, going to light totally- up. You see how I'm talking about this stuff? It's because I'm just like, but I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. In fact, some of you might leave this call and be like, I don't want to hear from this woman anymore, which is fine. Like, that's okay. But for the people, for those of you who need to hear some of this stuff, where I'm saying something that you've already been thinking, it's like, I'm just putting words to the stuff you all already have inside of you. Sophia. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being willing to come on and chat with me. I hope we get to connect again. Yeah, yeah thanks. I uh, just, just to continue from this, um, isn't, I mean, I don't want to be nitpicky, but isn't it then just more consulting? Uh, it could be. 
It depends on how you define all of those things. Yeah, exactly. So I think where we struggle when we're so brainwashed in our course and also when doing ICF accreditations and things like that, and we have our mentor coaches saying no, because I was a lawyer for a long time. So for oh. me, I always had to think for the client or come up with ideas and solutions. So the coaching journey was amazing in just realizing my yeah. fixing instinct, my savior instinct and dealing with all that. Um, I think once we get to a better place of not, you know, meeting the client where they are and not having our own agenda in there, we're so worried that we'll break that rule again. So I, I love what you say and I do it already because I'm also training to be a positive intelligence ah. uh, coach, which is training partly. But when I've had pod meetings, as they're called, with clients that the clients clearly absolutely love, I actually have nightmares the whole night about having broken the rules. Mm -hmm. So that's, and then in the morning, I'm like, that's crazy. They loved it. But my subconscious <laughs> is very worried. So um, I think that's what a lot of uh, people might share here as well. That feeling of, oh, but then we're breaking the rule. That's not ICF coaching. That's not, you know, and, and, but I love to combine it. And I want to find a way where I don't freak myself out doing it. <laughs> Um, I really appreciate you saying that and you're not, you're not alone in that. If anybody else agrees or with Sophia, pop it in the chat just so she can see that, you know, that it's, it's reflective that, that question, like what coaching is and here's, um, if it helps at all, Sophia, one thing that I've helped is I'm just very clear about what place I'm in when I'm talking with someone. Yeah. Can I offer, and I like the always keeping a client in choice is really, really, really like foundational for me. So yeah. I try very hard, you know, in my work in Misfit to Maverick and UMAP for coaches, I kind of, I know that I'm in more of a place of mentorship where I can say, all right, here's how, you know, I can bring a little bit more of my point of view into the work because that's what people are looking for, right? They're like, I want to hear about some of these ideas, but there is still underneath that I'm always saying, I'm going to put an idea on the table. You don't have to pick it up yeah. I say that all the time. Or depending on another relationship, I might say, would you like some ideas? Both yes and no are perfect answers. Would you, is it okay if I share my experience of this? I think it could help. Both yes and no are perfect answers. So that's just been helpful for me as being very explicit about what hat I'm wearing. Yeah. And maybe that, Sophia, could be part of it. Because if one of your natural gifts is being able to think deeply about things, to find solutions, you might have restorative as a top strength of like being able to see how things work together. That is a gift that people need. Yeah. And the, the coaching and those parts, maybe it's just, they can all be there. It's not just, you don't have to abandon everything you've done to help people before you got your coach training. I think that happens too. Is that when we become coaches, everything else we used to do to help people disappears. But guess what? Before I was a coach, you know what I was? A teacher. And I love teaching. Hence yeah. this class. Yeah. And I, for a long time, I was like, I'm a coach. I can't teach. I'm a coach. I can't teach. Until I said, I'm a coach and I teach. And I'm a thought partner. And I'm a brainstormer. And I'm a guide. And I'm a mentor. And I'm a cheerleader. And I, you know, and not either. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. I really like it. Awesome. Thanks. I hope it helps, Sophia. If any of you have had any other insights, by the way, you know we've got this amazing collage. What's sticking? What do you want to remember? What would you tell someone tomorrow if you're like, oh, I don't want to forget about it? Please post it in the collage. You can shift to page two or three. And we've got about 12 more minutes. I'd love if anyone else wants to chat. I see Shirley. Oh, beautiful. So talk about I something. Type something lightly. <laughs> so I typed something in the comments and didn't realize that I sent it to Rachel as opposed to everyone and it's way too much to type so I'm going to read it real quickly okay Please. Um, so I said this is eight years for me six with Allegra um, we keep evolving and creating our way we are not carbon copies we are uniquely different it's the secret sauce finding the right coach to help you be you your way. She keeps me terror excited by <laughs> it saved my coaching life many times over. We get down, we get drawn back into that 
crazy coaching system of marketing world crap and stuff that doesn't matter right now. Build relationships. And then I use the quote, I've learned that people will forget about what you did. People will never forget about how you made them feel. And so um, to the lady that was just speaking with a beautiful accent, Sophia, um, for many years, so I was an entrepreneur. I owned a business, a scrap metal garbage recycling business for 24 years before I became a coach. And I was very opinionated then. I had a huge staff, did many things. And so when I started coaching, I never coached. I just talked to everyone because I was like, oh my God, I, I give opinions, I give opinions. And then I learned to twist it to say, I am, when I became a certified coach, I say, I am certified. I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a shrink, but I am sharing with you the authentic me that I've experienced in my life. This may apply to you and it may, and it may not. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. But all <laughs> I'm sharing with you is what I've experienced so that no one is saying, oh, she said, because that was my fear that I would screw somebody's life up. So that was my fear. And so it took me a long time to even start coaching. And Allegra in the beginning, she's like, so what is it you do, Shirley? So uh, when are you going to do something, Shirley? You know, and so that's what it was. I was afraid because I do have lots of opinions, right? But when, when they're your opinions of your life and how it's affected you, you are coaching them based on a cause and effect for you. So that's how I look at it. And I don't, you know, go to the details of, oh, I'm breaking the rules. You're not breaking the rules. They're your rules, damn it. You're the coach. <laughs> your way or the highway. And people buy your secret sauce, right? If well, they wanted someone else, they would go somewhere else. But they're sticking with you. So there's something that's attracting them to you. So just keep doing it. You're not broken. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you. That was awesome. I love it. People buy your special sauce. When she, when Shirley said that, I literally thought of all of us having little jars out I'm like, well, this is mine. And if you don't like it, <laughs> I still have my jar of thoughts. You know, you say that. I, still I know. Have my jar I know. Of Thank you, Shirley. That was an awesome and generous share for everybody. I hope it, I hope they felt it. Um, other, other questions or thoughts or ahas or places you're feeling challenged or any one of these ingredients you want to know a little bit more about um, before we have to sign off for the day. If, I mean, if anyone has questions, if you've been following, if you have questions about the program, I'm happy to answer them. But again, we can do that uh, another time as well. Uh, Sophia. One quick one. Um, I'm just really curious because I did, I was following you and it, everything you said sort of really gels what I think um, already. So that helped me say, okay, forget about social media. My website has two pages. I've done them myself. That's fine. People can find me. And I've started coaching, coaching, coaching. And I get new clients via recommendations. So I never have the time to actually go back to that thing where you're supposed to start. So now, <laughs> which is like having a website and marketing. So I don't do any social media. I okay. realize I hate Instagram. My clients aren't on social media. Okay. But... Now I'm worried that that is not a thing to rely on. It's dangerous just to rely on recommendations. So what do you think of that situation? How important is social media in that situation? Well, what I love about this story, and maybe you're like, I just keep getting clients from referrals and I'm not doing this thing that I hate. I don't <laughs> any. One of my, one of my coach mentors, he said to me, do not make a problem where there isn't one. Oh. It is very, very possible. And to intentionally to create a coaching practice, not on social media, where you are just serving one person at a time. And that person is telling someone else and they're saying, Hey, can you help me? And then that person is telling someone else and they can help me. Yeah. So yeah, it was interesting. Krista put it's dangerous. You're successful that way. So notice the narrative that comes in. Oftentimes people want to market you a different way because they are selling a different way and they need to convince you that your way is wrong yeah. so that you will buy their way. Be mindful of that. The minute you go into Google and start talking about being a coach, we are bombarded with marketing about everything we have to do to start coaching. Yes. It is an industry, there's a ton of money in it. 
Yeah. It sounds like what you're doing, Sophie, is working. That's what yeah. I've heard. You're like, so what I'm doing is working, but should I do something else to make it work? It, do you see the kind of... Yeah, yeah no, it sounds really silly now, but yes, no. it is true. But so many people tell me, oh, that's dangerous, but just the comment from, from Krista, and, and that does then get you worried, you know? But yeah, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, and if you'd like, run experiments that light you up. If you get to a point you're like, I'd like to experiment with something different. Okay, I do that a lot. Yeah, no, right. and I do internal family systems as well. I'm training to do that, and, oh. and doing yeah. that with clients, and they love it. And I'm worried that I'm a therapist, but I make sure I stay in the scope of practice. So I'm just going in twenty different directions, and that gets me a little bit scared. But I, I love it. I love it. Okay, good. I just worked with, a, we have a, a, an IFS trained coach in Misfit to Maverick who a lot of people exper experienced her work. It sounded really, really powerful. So yes, yes. Thank you Thank so you. much, Sophia. Uh, Tatiana. Hi. Hi. Thanks for uh, unmuting and coming and talking with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for having this uh, space. Um, I, I get kind of nervous like to, to talk on That's these okay. things. Um, but I don't I don't really have a particular question. It's more of like sharing and I guess if you have something to say to that, okay, then I'd love to hear that because I, I really like love everything you have said um, over the past almost hour and a half. Um, and um, I, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. I have so much um, frustration it's almost a little bit emotional for me frustration um anger <laughs> um a lot of these like sort of negative emotions about marketing and after january 6th i'm, I'm not going to get into politics but that day um was really kind of had a, an impact on my opinion about social media and mm -hmm. And I've been told that I have to like market on social media. And I was also in a business accelerator program that was that I found the, the coach from that through social media. And then I felt like that program was really like it, it just didn't resonate. Not one thing that she said resonated with me. I found it to be very cookie cutter. Um, so I just I gave up on like all of this stuff for my business and I haven't done anything since that day um and i like kind of am in a place of like i don't know where to go or where to be or how to begin again because i feel like i've been trying to do this like over and over and over again and i feel like i'm not getting anywhere um so but hearing your language has probably been the first thing um that has really spoken to me in the last like you know 10 months or so so um, that's where I'm at. I, I feel like you can help me, but I'm not sure. I've said that before about other coaches and then that's not happened and et cetera. So that's my train of thought. You're not alone. Like, it's really important that you know that you're not alone. And I totally get it. I'm deeply grateful that you were willing to unmute and share. <laughs> um, and just, if something I've said has helped unlock something in you, that's what makes this worth it. This is why I want all of you to not worry about how many people, what happens if you impact even just one person, just one person, it creates ripples. And I'm sorry you had that experience. I'm sorry that you felt like you had to push yourself into a space that didn't, that wasn't right in alignment and that, and that it, and, and I'm sorry too, that it feels like your choice to perhaps remove that part, right? To say, you know what, social media actually isn't this space that I really want to be a part of right now, then feels like you have, there's no other options. Because there are. <laughs> I'm a big, and, and, and what I want to do, Tatiana, I'm going to, um, just because I don't think we'll have a chance to dive into it today, but I'd really like to continue talking to you and all of you too, if anyone wants a little more time to connect, what I'll do, Tatiana, is send you, um, uh, if you could send me an email, just reply back to the notice today. It all comes to me. I don't have like an assistant checking my emails. They all just come straight to me. Send me a note 
and I will reach out and I'll find some time for us to connect to continue the conversation just because I want to be able to continue helping you if I can in any way. Um, but here's if I can if I can offer one thing to all of you as far as like what else is there. And for many of you, this sounds like a broken record. But the thing to do as I see it is to start talking to individual people one at a time that you are already connected to. Is to look at the people you already know. One of the things I think about marketing is we think we need to reach people we don't yet know. <laughs> if I just reach people I don't know, then things will work out. That can sometimes be the feeling behind it. But I come from this place of what if you already know somebody and can you have a conversation with them? What that conversation is, we can get really creative about. Maybe it's just interviewing them or explaining your work and just getting back into kind of the habit of like, oh, this is something that I do and practicing what that sounds like. But I think we confuse marketing with somehow like having to become part of this big machine. And I just wanna reassure you, there are, there are ways of helping a person, forget about people, <laughs> of finding a person that you can help and being of help to you that I suspect would feel really good and actually in alignment with how you do wanna be showing up in your work right now. I hope that's helpful to hear. Maybe it's surfacing. Have you heard anything in that? I mean, I know there's been a lot on the call, but. No, I definitely have. Um, and I, even myself, like uh, before, I'm on a trip right now, I'm on vacation. Yeah. But prior to this vacation, I just said to myself, why don't I just make a flyer and like put it in my favorite doctor's office and put it in my dad's business. And that'll be that, like whoever, <laughs> knocks on my door, cool, whoever doesn't, all right, well, I'm used to that, so <laughs> that's okay. Yes. So that's, that's kind of like the headspace I'm in. So when I get back to, I'm from New York City, oh. when I get back there, um, I'm gonna just try that, which is like old fashioned marketing, I guess. Go for <laughs> it. <novel. laughs> you know what, first of all, I'm right up the street for you. I'm in the Hudson Valley. I'm not far. Oh, what a beautiful place. That's a beautiful um, place. To you know what I call that, everybody? What Tatiana has just described is an experiment. She's going to run an experiment that she's into. The only problem with the experiment in her mind is that she thinks it needs to be a different experiment. And I'm always like, I don't care what it is. Just run. Let's just try something. Just try something. Put a flyer up at the office. See what happens. Invite some friends over to your to a cafe to talk about an idea that you're interested in. There are lots of ways that you can all get into your work, into the craft of your work. Becoming a coach has become synonymous with becoming a business owner and learning how to become a marketer. And I'm gonna invite you to tease them apart. Let the marketing and the business stuff emerge out of you getting back into your work. You don't have to become a marketer to do your work. We need to start doing our work. And all of those other things start to emerge out of it. Thank you, Tatiana, for sharing and for being vulnerable. You're, a lot of people, really, you know, this resonates with others. Thank you. I hope we get to talk again. Hey, yeah, like, I know you're at the end. And yeah. I'm going to apologize. But guys, I want to share something with you. I've been stalking Allegra. I say stalking all the time for six years. <laughs> and the reason I do that is because I escape, like I get mad at her and I run away and I say, no, I'm going to do it the way they say, because they look like it's working for them. And then I go out there and I do that crap. And then I say, shit, where's Allegra? <laughs> and, I, oh, and I run back and I come back and I go back to Allegra. Six years, this has been happening for me. And every time um, I go back and I, she doesn't even know, but I put up a post when we first started, I stole a picture that she put up and I put it up and I, and I shared with people, the person who keeps me getting back in the game. Every time I pull over on the road and park and I get constipated, boom, Allegra's doing a free workshop and here I am. And now I'm back and I just created something as we were sitting here. So there's something about that ideator and activating. She doesn't pay me to say this, but I say this from my heart because when I am constipated, I don't get stuck. I get constipated, right? I just sit here. 
And when I get constipated, I just wait for one of her freaking workshops or I go to her YouTube and there's something she gives you. I call her my duh coach, right? Because it's it's a duh once she says it. So if you're if you've been just frustrated, she took herself off the internet. I was like, what is she doing? She took herself off Facebook. She was my lifeline. I was like, <gasps> I went to Instagram because she got off Facebook and went to Instagram because I needed her connection, right? And then she went off of that and she just started doing regular stuff. So it all works, right? You just got to figure what works for you. And, you know, when you said, I'm going to do that flyer thing, I started to grin because I feel like one of her kids, like I've been sitting at her table, right? Taking her lessons because she does the craziest shit. And she's like, just do it. Just do it. And it works. And it works for you. And the whole marketing thing and Instagram and all that stuff. If, it, you know, like she said, Sophia, it, it was silly when we said it out loud sometimes. That's why I call her my duh coach. Cause it's like, yeah, it's not broken. So let me break it to fix it, right? And so that's the best problem to have clients without you having to kiss their butt, drag them in and jump up and down for them. So it's just all those things to say, if you're stuck, just reach out to her. She she doesn't pay me for this, but she means the world to me because she okay. saved my life so much. All right, I'm done. Can you tell I missed you? <laughs> I missed you. Well, when I saw you pop on, I was like, Shirley. Oh, you guys are awesome. Shirley, that was really lovely for you to share. I, I, it means so much. Someone's raised their hand. Should be an ADAPT instructor. So much overlap. Someone's actually said, someone tried to get me in touch. I reached out to someone in ADAPT because someone in ADAPT was like, you should come do a course at ADAPT, but I don't know any, know anybody there. So I'm always happy to do workshops. Um, uh, Krista, and then we have, I do have to run. Or Krista, were you just, were you, did you raise your hand? Go ahead. I feel like Shirley broke open the testimonial hour here for a moment. So <laughs> let me, I'll, I'll keep it super brief. Um, I too, no, a year ago. So a year ago, like I came out of a coaching program that was pretty like defined and I was struggling because I'd been in a, different group before Misfit to Maverick and liquor and a few, I don't know if anybody has left on this call who remember, I was like cheery, very cheery. And um, I struggled for a while because there'd been a lot of messaging and it's not just coaching industrial complex. Sometimes I think it's just culture about productivity and how things should look and the shoulding, the shoulds. And so I will say it's taken a while, but I, I feel like I'm, I've, you know, it's in the last few months and I'm like, I think would recognize this. There's been a turning of the corner of like, oh, the way for me doesn't have to look like their way. It can look like my way in so many different ways. And experimenting is a lot more fun when I get to do it the way it works for me. And the UMAP has helped the Call the people that come in to guest call and Allegra herself. So I just say, yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm a convert. <laughs> this is yeah, this was yeah, not expected, and I, I I I appreciate you guys just sharing those things, and um, it means a lot. So thank you, and thanks to all of you who came today, who are enjoying the free museum. Continue to enjoy. There will be another free class on August 30th. Actually, I'm going to do another one. I try and do one monthly, so I'm going to come up with a theme. August 30th will be the next free class at noon Eastern. That also is the day that the next round of UMAP for Coaches opens up if you want to get on that wait, wait list. If you have questions, Tatiana, send me a note because I'd like to connect with you a little bit more and give you a little bit more space if it would help. And anyone here, if you're like, I just need a little more space, I am happy to give it. I am a relator fueled by adaptability. I'm like, let's just see what we can make happen. So um, thank you for reading notes to coaches. Reply anytime. Yeah, I hope this has been insightful. And thank you for creating such an incredible collage. It's beautiful. Page one and two are both looking incredible. I'm going to keep this open for the rest of the day. I won't take a snapshot until later. So I invite you as we leave, head on over to the collage, share any insights. What do you want to remember from today? What would you tell someone else if they needed to hear it? Um, I appreciate all of you very much and email me anytime with questions and follow-ups. Thanks again, everybody. Be well. Feel free to unmute too on our way out. I like hearing everyone say bye. Bye, beautiful. I've missed you. Love you, Shirley. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Krista. Bye, Lee. I didn't get to say hi to you, but I see you and I love bye. you. Bye, Rachel. Bye, Oda. Bye, Vicky.
की 